I've written 17 books. I've started about 18 businesses and probably failed at about 16 of them. I've been a very successful investor over the past 10 years, and I'm about to tell you how I did it. I'm James Altucher, and I'm probably one of the stupidest people you'll ever meet. Many people always ask me, how did I go from successful to so broke? How could someone be such an idiot like I was? And now also, they see me as successful and they see me with many successful people on my podcast. I've had people ranging from you know, Mark Cuban, Peter Thiel, Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, many successful people in my life. And I also feel very successful again and have had many successes since that point. And I wanna share with you a little bit how I've gone all the way down and then come back up. I always try to do what my parents and teachers and everybody were telling me to do. Get good grades, go to college, get a good job, uh, get promotions, boom, 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 boom. What the standard quote unquote path was for everyone at that time. And I did it, or I tried to do it, and I ended up with a job at HBO, but I still wasn't happy. So I worked for HBO for many years, and I was trying to be creative, and I always felt like somebody always was out there telling me, no, we, we're not gonna use this, or we're not gonna do this, or don't do this, don't do that. But even more importantly, I was really scared. I wanted freedom. I didn't wanna take the chance that I would be fired or demoted. After many years, I started something on the side. I'm not like one of these self-help guys out there who are telling you, oh, all you've gotta do is quit your job and start a company. Not everyone is, could just quit your, their job and be an entrepreneur. You need, you need first to think about safety net and freedom and managing your risk and all the skills and hard work you have to do to kind of start something on the side while you're even doing that corporate job. So what was happening then was that corporations were just starting to build websites. So I started a little company to build websites for other entertainment companies. I did the website for HBO, but then I did the websites for music labels like Loud Records, Bad Boy Records, Interscope, Jive Records, BMG, and so on. I did the websites for movies like The Matrix and uh, movies for Sony, Miramax, and so on. I did TimeWarner.com. I did the initial AmericanExpress.com. And I started to gradually build up a bigger and bigger company. But it was hard work. I was working I don't know, like 100 hours a week, and it was, it was tough. I figured there has to be other ways to make money, and that's when I decided to sell the company. It's hard to believe, but there was this period where I was losing a million dollars a week. I had worked really hard, sold my first business, made a lot of money, and then I was such an idiot. I, can I even, I don't even really want to talk about this, should I talk about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was losing a million dollars a week. I was making every bad decision you could possibly make. I was making bad investment decisions, starting new companies that were horrible. I was gambling all the time. I was flying all over the place. I was buying homes, losing homes. It was horrible. And at one point, I went to the ATM machine and I had just $143 left in my bank account after all of that work. And I thought, this, is horrible, I'm either gonna kill myself or I don't know what I'm gonna do. I didn't even know how I was gonna buy diapers for my children that weekend. And so I remember I called my parents up and I asked to borrow a little bit of money and they didn't have much. I came from a suburban middle-class background. Uh, we never really had much. And you know, I worked my way through, through college, I, I had a jobs, I always supported myself, and so here I am trying to borrow money, and they quite correctly said no. It was essentially all my fault, and, and I believe that now to be true. I'm glad they said no, but at the time, but at the time, I got angry, I hung up the phone, um, I didn't return their phone calls for, for months, and then my father, six months later, had stroke, so it turned out I actually never, never spoke to him again. And um, you know, so I had to really figure out from scratch, how do I make this work for myself? And I remember there was another time, by this point, I had lost more than everything I had lost, 
you know, my, my family and I was staying on the floor someplace. And I remember it clearly because it was Thanksgiving day. So I went to the diner next door and just had this depressing turkey sandwich for Thanksgiving and had to go back and figure out, well, how am I gonna come back from this? How am I gonna support my children? How am I gonna find some degree of happiness again? I would see people walking around the street with a smile on their faces. I couldn't even understand how they would get those muscles to work to make a smile. You know, so at this point, here I had spent decades, you know, building so much goodwill with, with really great investors, venture capitalists, entrepreneurs, successful hedge fund managers, and so on. But I had nothing to show for it. I wanted to figure out how can I make my network become my net worth? Because I had such a good network, I wanted to really improve my freedom and success in life. And I'm not talking like all these self-help gurus who say go out and start a company and hustle and grind and all this stuff. I really just wanted freedom in my life. I wanted to, I wanted to have $100 in my pocket when I, when I needed it. And I wanted to figure out how to make that happen. And again, I had created all this, I had, done, I had built this great network and I saw that not all the money was being made on Wall Street. A lot of it was being made in the Silicon Valley boom. But at the same time, regular people like me couldn't invest in these opportunities. And there was all these rules and laws and regulations. So I worked really hard to figure out how can I benefit from the success of the successful people around me, from all of the successful investors out there. How can I benefit from learning from them? And I figured out a backdoor way to piggyback onto many of their successful trades and investments. And I started making successful trades and investments. 200, 500%, 1,000% gains. And so I started writing about it. I was writing for the Financial Times. I've written a bunch of books. I wrote this book, The Choose Yourself Guide to Wealth. I wrote many books in finance. I wrote many articles for Yahoo Finance, CNBC, Forbes, and so on. And the most important thing I realized is that if you're not making your own life choices about investments, career, who you're with, and so on, then somebody else, whether it's teachers, corporations, bosses, government, peers, whatever, somebody else is making those choices for you and the results will not be as good for you. And this is set, something that's happening all over the economy. You have to start making choices for yourself. And that's when I really thought, how should I get back to the point where I can be as successful as I saw many of the people around me? A million people have written me asking me how to be a more successful investor, and I will tell you what I did to do it. There's no one answer, by the way. I think you have to be wary of these sort of financial scam newsletters that think they have or pretend they have all the answers, but I will tell you exactly what I did. I wrote about it in my book, Choose Yourself, Guide to Wealth, which you can have totally for free. Uh, well, they, they gotta pay the, sh the shipping. Shipping? Yeah. All right, sorry, shipping, free ship plus shipping. Go to this link described in the description. And meanwhile, if you see this ugly looking guy in the street, uh, say hi to me because it really makes me feel better.